Saucer is one of the more highly requested characters I've seen as of late for the new season of Shinobi Striker. Being one of the only puppet masters we got to know in the whole series, he stood out for a very good reason. The 35-year-old Akatsuki member was able to create his puppets out of people that were still alive. These puppets became something far deadlier as they not only came equipped with the weaponry that the puppet master provided, which is anything he wants coated in poison basically, but the puppet also had access to the chakra and jutsu that the body used while it was alive. In fact, this man was insane enough to where he was somehow able to turn his own body into a puppet, keeping the image that he was still only a kid after all the years had passed. Before I go much deeper into how Sasori could be represented in a game, let me make something clear. I have little to no hope that any Puppet Master would make it into the game as is. There are far too many things that make a Puppet Master unique in terms of combat that there is next to nothing we can use in the current game in order to properly create one. However, I'm not going to take this line down and I still have my own ideas. So let's imagine that this is for Shinobi Striker 2 instead, because if my idea isn't going to happen, I can make up a hypothetical sequel as well since it won't be real. First off, let's start with a new class, the Puppet Master. Besides a new logo that I'm proud to have been able to make, there are some major rule changes that will make this class unique and accurate to the source material. And let's start off with the main form of combat being the puppet. Naruto has shown us that there are various form of puppets ranging from basic weapon users, some that have a complete internal armory, and some that are full body shields covering the user. We're going to stick to a basic puppet though as just using a single weapon can give a fair and balanced combat style. Your movement option, which is WASD on keyboard and left stick on the controller, will only control your movement as the Puppet Master, and the puppet will always move and stay close to you. If you lock onto an opponent, however, your puppet will charge and fight that opponent. Of course, there's only so much distance you can have between the puppet and the master, so this will be limited. Second is the use of Jutsu. Saucery has shown that puppets can hold scrolls as a form of ammunition in order to fire off some elemental based attacks with his hands being able to shoot out flames after using a single scroll. In Boruto, scroll cartridges show that the same idea can still be used on a much smaller scale, with only a wrist strap and miniature scrolls, allowing someone to cast ninjutsu even if they have no form of training whatsoever. We could either go with these small scrolls to cast normal jutsu, or the jutsu slots can be used for special weapon based attacks like emitting a cloud of gas. Ultimates could sort of follow the same formula, but on a much greater scale. Substitutions are where things get tricky. There is a major weakness to Puppet Masters, and that weakness is the user itself. Puppet Masters really can't fight without a puppet. Sure, they can use chakra threads to maybe throw the opponent off a bit by tripping them, but outside of that, they have very little taijutsu skill and basically no experience with ninjutsu and genjutsu. The best way to fight Puppet Masters is to avoid the puppet and attack the user. So in quote-unquote Shinobi Striker 2, Puppet Masters don't get to use substitutions, but instead, it is a chakra thread reconnection. As a Puppet Master, you and your puppet both have separate health bars. If your puppet gets damaged enough, the Puppet Master loses full control of the puppet and thus causes the puppet to fall to the ground, leaving the Master at their most vulnerable point. At this point, you might as well just run since you have no other option, but if you survive long enough, your chakra threads will be automatically reconnected to your puppet causing them to immediately return to your side and be ready to go. That's kind of the basics for this class. It's hard to really think about how every aspect can work, such as using different puppets and all of that, but I hope I was able to paint a picture of what I'm thinking when it comes to this class. Now keep those in mind when it comes to Saucery as a character when I discuss his jutsu and such. First off, Saucery's puppet would be the third Kaze Kage, seeing as it was his favorite puppet and a perfect candidate for how this class could work. Maybe different weapons could pop out during combos, but nothing that'll drastically change range or damage. For the first jutsu, I think we could go over the fact that Sasori is a huge fan of covering any weapon of his with poison. Jutsu number one would be a buffing jutsu that gives your basic attacks a poison effect. Any normal attack you are able to land will cause your opponent to be poisoned for a few seconds. Note that this effect would not stack on multiple hits since the tick damage would be completely ridiculous since each hit basically multiplies the poison effect for a bit. Instead, each hit could reset the timer for how long the target is poisoned. I'd say after 10 or 15 seconds, the jutsu would wear off and your basic attacks would go back to normal. Jutsu number 2 would be the Iron Sand Drizzle, a technique where the Iron Sand of the Kazekage is launched at the opponent from the puppet like bullets, kind of similar to the Earth Dragon Bullet that the defense class has in the game. 
However, instead of a constant barrage of bullets, this jutsu would set up several projectiles and fire them all at once, similar to a shotgun. Of course, with this being a sorcery DLC jutsu, the sand is coated in poison and would give the poison status effect to a target if they are hit, with more damage and a stronger poison effect being possible if the target takes more of the bullets rather than just a single shot. The ultimate would be the Iron Sand World Method. The ultimate would have an animation that starts with two giant shapes of iron sand forming in the air above the user or over a target if you're locked on to someone. These two shapes would collide in the air and turn into a giant sphere of branches made of the iron sand. If the opponent gets hit by this jutsu, they take a huge amount of damage. And if the opponent is around half health, this damage alone would be enough to kill the opponent. However, if the opponent has enough health to survive this attack, they are then inflicted with a major poison status effect that would drain them down to a single point of health over time, as well as a movement debuff. Healing Jutsu can remove the poison and the movement effect, but it would give a reduced amount of healing as a trade-off. The training rewards for this could be a bit interesting, but I would say the Jutsus and the Kasekage puppet are a given. We could have Sasori's hairstyle and maybe even his puppet body as a fun full-body cosmetic. For an accessory, we could use the scrolls he had on his back that summoned his puppets and held his ammunition for his fire attack he shot from his hands. After that, the title of Scorpion of the Red Sand seems to fit perfectly since Sasori translates to Scorpion. Other than that, level up rewards can be filled with valuable and esoteric scrolls. Again, this is only a hypothetical DLC concept since I can't find a way for Puppet Masters to work with how the game is now. This is more of an idea for a possible but unlikely sequel that loosely follows the rules of the current game. If you like this video, make sure to hit that like button, don't forget to subscribe, and turn on the bell so you'll be notified anytime I upload. But with that being said, I'll see you in the next video, the next stream, whatever it may be. Peace out!